Oh, hi. Welcome back to another theme time. I'm Rob, the DIY theme guy, making things with more details. <laughs> yeah, and I'm standing once again in front of my adventure wall. As I refer to it, you may have seen this before, as the adventure wall has been the focal point of all of my videos so far. All three of them. If you haven't seen those videos yet, go give them a watch. Check them out. And then like and subscribe. And if you have seen them, thank you. Like and subscribe. Today's element of the adventure wall is one that most people would say ooh, is, well, just rocks. I'm talking about these artificial lava stones, you see? as the corner columns holding up the adventure wall. Now they look like full-blown animated lava rocks, but they're actually artificial. As I already said, there is a bit of a process that goes into making them look like real animated lava rocks. Of course, the base process of this involves a wood frame. Word! Fine concrete work of concrete work done. We got to put a skin over the top of it, and for that, I'm going to use plywood. <laughs> now that I got the quarter-inch plywood cut to fit and installed on top of the wooden framework. I can move on to the first step of the actual rock work, and that is figuring out the shape of each rock and where each rock is going to go on top of the wall. It's kind of like a big rocky puzzle. And I've already jumped into the ring down here. Ugh. Here we are. And here is the future rock wall underneath the window. Now, I've already started plotting out some of the rock shapes here using a permanent marker. Now you could just wing it, draw them right up on the wall. I didn't. I uh, also didn't draw them out on a piece of paper, as you could also do. I was using this photograph as a reference. Now it was taken outside of a popular tiki bar at a Polynesian resort. And I liked the way each rock was shaped, the texture of them, and how they all fit together. So I used it as the reference for my project here. And what I did was lay out a graph in my computer, took the photograph of the rocks I liked the most and how they fit together, and placed them in each section of the graph that was going to require the rock work. Now that sounds like a lot, and it kind of was, but it really wasn't as well, because I knew that was going to lay out the best selection for what I wanted in the end. A lot better than if I just did whatever, yeah. And it goes all the way down and back up the other side. I'll show you where the next step goes. Ah, ah. Oh, oh. He's, he's stuck. Oh, no. <laughs> you can see where I use the permanent marker to draw on the plywood for my basic rock shape. Then I use this three quarter inch sheet foam from the big box store to extend that shape three dimensionally away from the plywood wall. I did that by tracing the basic rock shape onto the three quarter inch sheeting foam. Using this kitchen knife from the dollar store, I cut it out. Now when you use a knife like that, you might want to keep a sharpening stone handy because it can get dull kind of quick. You're cutting dense foam and not vegetables. Once you have your basic rock shape cut out and it looks beautifully natural, you can go ahead and begin the process of gluing it up. Use some inexpensive construction adhesive. Dab that in a few spots on the back. And use some hot glue in a few areas on the back, mostly the corners and the center. The hot glue is going to give you an instant bond to the wall while you wait for the construction adhesive to cure. That way you don't have to hold it up with your finger, like I am now. Once it's stuck on the wall, you can use that knife, carve out more of the rock shape around the edges or in the insides of the rock if you want more depth in some areas. You can also do that before you glue it onto the wall like I did. Because the kitchen knife has a bit of a handle and a long blade, and I didn't think it was going to be as easy to cut it after it was already glued onto the wall. You're just going to have to think through your project and what's going to work best for your installation. Now that we have the foam pieces glued onto the wall structure, it's time to move on to the next step. And that is putting a layer on top of the foam for the concrete mortar to better adhere to. To do that, we're going to be using a tiling compound called Thinset. Welcome to compound cooking. 
First we add the water in our mixing bucket. Then proceed to shovel in scoops of the thin set mix. Multiple scoops will be necessary dependent on how much water you add. Using an appropriate utensil, begin to stir the mix. Soon you will determine how much more mix to add. Shifting in a few more scoops should bring you to the proper consistency. Oh my dear, I thought you knew what you were oh. talking about, but look at that. It's still a soupy slop. Oh. I'll take it from here, dear. I think it's time for your medication. Oh. The vodka's in the liquor cabinet. Oh. Now, of course, you'll need to add more mix than that. We won't want to be spreading a chunky diarrhea all over the walls now, do we? No, of course not. The consistency should be that of a thick pudding, with no lumps or bumps or lovely lady humps. There you go. Stir it, whip it, give it a bit of a beating, just like Miranda with the power tube. Oh, let's check another channel, shall we? Whip, sir. Whip, 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 stir. Come on, faster all together now. Cooking can be fun. Uh, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. Wah! Having fun, having fun, all right? Having fun, I see now. Step three. We also have to beat. So it's beat, 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 stir, whip, stir, whip, beat, beat, stir. That's not right. I'm sorry. Oh, so am I. Getting to be no matter where you look, someone's got it all mixed up. Oh, look at our wee bucket of grey goo. Grey goo, that's not a new character from The Mandalorian. It's our thin set already. Scoop up a hefty spoonful and give it a light plop. Be sure not to use this as a secret nightly mask, or your lips will be sealed. If you put this in a frosty cup and it looks appetizing, you've done it right. Well done, Poppy. As Rob slams mud on the clinging rocks, we near the end of our main time. Will the border stick? Will he be able to tune the fresh mud into real strictly fantastic shapes? Will his project ever come to fruition? 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 
Get done? Is that really a question? I mean, you've only seen it does. So tune in next week time for the exciting conclusion of The Cornerstones. Hi-ho, Silver! Take server from the Dollar Shore! Away! <laughs>